All right, so welcome to another episode of Make It Happen, where we talk about things that we find during home inspections. Uh, if you like this content, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications button. Give us, give us your comments. We'd really appreciate that, and uh, we'll reply to every comment given. So, William, more pictures today. Yep, we got more pictures for you. And I uh, I thought we'd start off with a little bit of color. Okay. Um, unlike the other podcasts, we're going to do a little bit of storytelling. So All right. there's going to be a sequence of photos in certain situations. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's do it. All right. So um, speaking of color, we got a thermal photo right here. And you can see there's just a nice big blue blotch in the ceiling. So that's an infrared camera using the, the <clears throat> infrared lighting spectrum, right? Yes. And believe it or not, uh, we found a roof leak. Yep. Yep. Um, now this was a brand new roof, believe it or not. Could you see that at all without the camera? No. It was just like, you couldn't tell couldn't, anything. Couldn't tell. No stain. But if I got, cause I had to put my moisture meter up to it okay. because there was no stain. Right. And when I got maybe six inches, you could see maybe a small yellow circle. Okay. It's not really visible to the eye, just standing on the ground. You'd have to like get way up there. Okay. Yeah. Um, when it dries out though, it might stain. Yeah. So, yep. Okay. Uh, um, I actually got to go back out there, but um, I assessed what the cause of this leak was, and the cause was the chimney flashing. It's a uh, brand new roof, so I'm like, I'm not sure if it's the roofing material that's leaking. I did look to see if there was paper under it. There was, um, but this was um, the more prominent defect on the roof in that location. So it looks like this may have been a flipper home because they painted the chimney so it will look really good from the ground. You can see the paint overspray on the shingles. And it looks like they actually, I don't know if they did something to the flashing or not, but that is, you cannot put flashing over the top of shingles and then nail it down. It defeats the purpose. Yep. Flashing should be under the shingles and it should not be nailed. Yep, because those nails are just going to rust and pop. And, yep. and it go it will and it, and it punctures the the uh, shingle membrane and the 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 paper that's under there. Yep. Yep. Definitely. So <clears throat> um, somebody need needed to come back out and reflash this, which was super cool because I was able to go back out after they did so, and now we get to see what it's actually supposed to look like. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, yeah, and you can tell that they've replaced some shingles because you don't have paint overspray on those shingles. <laughs> Yeah. And they had to replace them because they punctured them. They damaged them. So, yep. Um, oh, very good. Yep, yep. And it was really nice that it rained right before I went back out, and I got to put the thermal camera on it, and it was dry. And so it wasn't, the condition was not, the not, thermal anomaly was no longer there. Correct. Did you see a stain, though, this time? Or No? Nope, the stain remained the same size. Okay. Yep. It was the same, very faint. Yeah. Okay, so good. Very good. Okay. Um, now, <laughs> this, this one, is, we've argued about this. This is underneath a garage, or underneath a uh, driveway. Yes. So this is wood, a wood-framed driveway uh, bridging from the street to the structure. Yes. Uh, on a downward slope. You see that on a hillsides, hillside homes a lot, right? Yes. Yes. I, this, this hillside home actually wasn't too old. Um I think it was built maybe in the 90s. And uh, I know um, you're, you're wondering where that water's coming from, right? Yep. Yep. Um, so there was water coming in from a number of locations on this house, so I had to recommend a drainage contractor. Okay. But I got up on top of this, and you could see – this is the driveway, by the way. And you could see the sealant that they put in – um, right here is all deteriorated. Right, coming up the left hand side. Right here, we can see some pretty pretty big cracks for moisture to get in, and that's essentially where the <clears throat> moisture is getting in underneath the home from the driveway. So what's surprising there is that even though they're sealing those cracks, moisture is probably still going to get in because there should be a vapor barrier under the concrete. So that paper that's under the concrete is actually probably been torn or split. But do you think that would involve um, tearing the driveway out and replacing the paper? Or well, I mean, I, I <laughs> well, <laughs> they probably should just seal that concrete so moisture can't get in there. It's yeah. probably what they should do. That way, they don't have to rip up the concrete. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the cheaper way to do it too. Yep. Okay. Um. So now we got a 
older home. You can tell that it's older because it's on a raised foundation. Mm-hmm. And you can tell this home has had, um, it's it's been updated. Um, right. Uh, looks like they got some new siding on there, new roof. Um, new windows. New windows. I inspected this house a few weeks ago, and th- this was actually an inspection we did three or four years ago, and they just totally gutted the whole place, called us back out to reinspect it to see if the work was good. Okay. And um, with that being said, it's an older home, and they did put tiles on the roof, as you can see here. These aren't wood shakes, even though they look like it. Um, that's concrete tile, and whenever you have a concrete tile, there are minimum framing size requirements. Like, well, concrete's heavy. Yes. Right? So you can't have your typical two-by-four rafter as you see here, like um, you do um, see commonly in homes built in the 40s and the 30s. Yeah, when this home was originally built, uh, what's a? it was probably a wood shake shingle. They probably wanted to match that with those concrete shingles. That's probably why they picked that, because it looks like a wood shake, and they wanted to keep the original aesthetic look uh, from the original architecture. And what is a telltale sign for us as inspectors here in Southern California is they put spaced sheathing on the rafters of the attic framing uh, when they when they did wood shake shingles, yep. right? And so here you can see the older, darker uh, panel boards there. That's spaced sheathing. And they just, when they re-roofed, they put plywood right over it and yep. then put a heavier material, which is the concrete, on top. However, they did not beef up the or strengthen the uh, supports in the framing. Nope, they did not. So I think I think those rafters are probably four feet on center, or at least three feet on center. They're pretty wide. Yep. They they should probably have at least another rafter right in the middle between all of those. And yep. they are those two by fours or yeah, those are two by fours, and that's it. Um, on top of that, it's a one by it looks like a one by six ridge board. Yeah, so this this roof structure was not with the added weight of the additional layer of sheathing, and you can see they've already had to replace a rafter and add some additional supports over there in the rear. There's no wood. Yeah, they um, they didn't do what they really needed to do to support that concrete. No. Um, now I was surprised not to see um, more movement and defects in the framing. You didn't see any sagging or... I did not. Any deflecting? Nope, nope. But uh, what I did notice, and I, I tried to make a case for why I wasn't seeing it. So they had a finished attic. And essentially, where in the finished attic, they pretty much put drywall up all up on the against the ceiling and the roof framing, um, which is what they typically do in, in attics. I mean, it can stiffen things and keep them, you know, but you're still having that weight on it. And yeah, yeah definitely should get a, uh, a general contractor to take a look at that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, right here, we are looking at a 100-plus-year-old fourplex that I inspected in Koreatown. So that would mean 1923 or older? Yep. Okay. And um, this looks like normal damaged siding, but it's not just any siding. Right. This is actually asbestos siding. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's a very distinctive looking kind of a panel board. Yep. Um, and asbestos is friable and is known to cause cancer. Right. Yep. Uh, yeah. So there, believe it or not, a lot of people don't know this, but a lot of homes are sided with asbestos shingles, especially homes built in the twenties and in after. the twenties and thirties, because it was such a good insulator. Yeah. Right? These homes don't have insulation in the walls, and this stuff would actually insulate the house too. Great stuff, yeah. uh, but just not the most healthy material. <laughs> no, no. Um, and then same home. So I'm just kind of beat up on this home a little bit, and I felt like somebody was playing an inspector joke on me. <laughs> by telling me to go out and inspect this thing and just go in and they're just not upkeeping it at all. Uh, so this is a, this is a, exactly why you want ventilation in a bathroom. Yep. The, the fan is not for, you know, the odor that you get from going to the bathroom. The fan is to exhaust the moisture out of the bathroom because if you don't, this is what it does. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. And there wasn't, there was no fan in this bathroom and there was no window. Well, there you Because I, I believe where the window was, they turned it into a laundry closet. Okay. And put a water heater in there and stuff. And um, that definitely was causing this. 
Was this a this is a fourplex? So that's a rental. Okay. It was funny. It was a rental, but the guy was renting it to all of his family members. <laughs> he wasn't even renting it. He was just letting his family live there. And he's like, I guess he was sick and tired of them. And he was moving to Vegas. He's like taking the money and leaving. He even told the buyer to um, pretty much go F off and don't bug him about how beat up the place is. Just yeah. leave me alone. You're paying for the land and knock it down and rebuild like next door. Yeah. But this is in K-Town? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So prime real estate. Yep. Same house. All right. I know, I know we like seeing all... I mean, we actually, we don't like seeing it. Um, but um, every now and then, um, we'll see all this white and yellow stuff yeah, the, growing on the soil down there. Right. So this is because there's a lot of moisture in the soil, and when it dries, it just kind of wicks up the mineral deposits or fungi or whatever sits right on top of it and yeah i i don't know what all those cans are doing down there but we for some reason we always seem to find cans under the house yeah <laughs> the, the 24 packs pretty notorious yeah um but yeah i mean this older foundation um 100 year old house you, we can see that the um, girders or floor beams are starting to sag a little bit up there yep. some of the posts are leaning yep they really need a foundation specialist. And I'm sure a lot of the issues are being caused by the moisture in the soil here. Yep, absolutely. Yep. So, yeah, they need to dry that out, rake, rake that stuff out, and clean it up, and maybe do some maintenance to this foundation. Yep. yep. It needs a retrofit for sure. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> so you jump right from that to pools, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Start contrast. This was interesting. Um, I thought it was pretty noteworthy to bring this here today. Um, so I was looking at this pool. I'm like, wow, this pool is pretty worn out. It's time to be resurfaced. And <laughs> the homeowner is like, not so fast. This pool is only five years old. Wow. And I'm like, well, what, well, how much acid is the pool guy dumping in the water? I mean, <laughs> it looked like it's eating up the liner pretty good. No? <laughs> That's what I thought too. And um, I guess... What actually is going on here is a um, they're having a it was a coloring defect on the installation of the pool. Interesting. And I don't have the article here with me right now, but essentially, I believe it was Mike the Pool Man in yep. Folsom, California, yep. released an article where they use a hardening accelerator on the plaster. Yes. And when they use that hardening accelerator on colored plaster, you get a defect such as this, where the pool starts to discolor, molt, and pretty much. Um, so do not use a hardening accelerator <laughs> when you're putting a colored liner in the pool. Yep, exactly. And so that was a botched uh, job there. And it's a known thing that happens. So a pool guy should not do that. Yes. And I guess they have all these concrete associations and plaster associations that know about this defect and advise against using this method because this will happen so what happened with here with this guy did uh did you did he tell you he, so that he just let the pool guy get off on it or I'm, I'm sure they didn't pay the full price yeah they probably got a discounted price <laughs> probably got a big discounted price and it's, he, they just he, didn't want the headache of draining the pool and redoing and it all over redoing again. it all over again right yeah oh, all right all right all right. Back to foundations. Um, this was another house I just inspected. It's an older home, raised foundation. Um, and they just put nails in. It looks like some... Those are just nails. Yeah, they just nailed it in. They didn't actually put the bolts. Yeah, so these. Um, this is a positive reinforcement. Okay. Um, these were not required when the home was built. Mm -hmm. um, they started requiring this in newer raised foundations. And um, essentially what they did do is they nailed it and they didn't put the bolts where they were required to go. Right. And well, putting those bolts in requires you to drill preset holes, and then, I mean, it's a, it's it's an extra step, right? Yeah. You need to have a power tool down there with you, and um, it's more work. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, at least they tried. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Okay. Uh, this will be the last photo I have for you today. I know we're, um, we're bouncing a little bit all over the place all now. Right, so what do we got here, William? So what we got here is we have a sub panel that was installed when they installed solar. Okay. And um, 
I guess the solar guys were a little hard on the house. Um, but other than that, they um, didn't do some correct installations here in this panel. And there's a, a few. We can see here that we have two 20 amp two pole breakers installed. And those wires look a little big for those breaker sizings, don't they? Well, the wires on the breakers look like the same wires that are feeding the panel. Correct. That's not good. No, no, <laughs> no. And, um, yep, so I believe we need to have someone come and either replace the breakers or rewire them correctly. Yep. Um, you did, was, were the breakers labeled? Do you know what they were for? They were for the solar disconnects. Okay. Well, yep. So we don't know, right? <laughs> yep. Right. And then another thing that we are seeing here that um, they did incorrectly is, for those of you that don't know, the green wire signifies a grounding wire, and the white wire signifies a neutral wire. Right. And in a sub panel, we do not want to see those two wires going to the same bus bar. Right. Because we don't want a grounding wire to be energized through the neutral. Right. Um, and sending that back to the panel constantly because that can actually lead to overheating at the bus bar. Yeah, so this is an indication that these guys that wired this, and if you look at just how messy the wires are, yeah, whoever did this wasn't a, a real professional, uh, not 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 a uh, not a craftsman or a, a qualified electrician, in my opinion. In That's just an indication that you, they got just somebody that shouldn't be wiring this panel. That was a solar guy. Um, and I, I'm not too sure, but I think there's a law that actually requires them to have a, either a licensed electrician or electrical engineer on site during the installation process. Yeah. Well, I bet there wasn't on this day. <laughs> on this day, I right? hear they don't always have one. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so they're just running and gunning. Yep. So, all right. Well, that's everything I have for you this week. Oh, all right. Well, hey, thank you, William. Uh, great photos, great conditions. I uh, really enjoyed talking uh, about all of that. Like, subscribe, hit that notifications button, leave us your comments. Uh, we'll see you next time.